All right, let's talk about the jump ball. Uh, there's a lot of rules around jump balls, and I think as players it's important you guys understand what those rules are. In this particular uh, situation, we have anybody who is within three feet of the circle is considered to be on the circle. So I would say in this particular jump ball scenario, every single person is on the circle. They're close enough. Now, when you're on the circle, there are no rules about having to be side by side. Um, the only rule is, is that you have to give the other team the option of standing in between you and another player. So for example, if Kai were to stand over here to try and give PJ a tipping spot that's that's dominated. Well, actually, we have that right here. We have um, Miles and Trevor with no white players in between. So a player on the white team could uh, demand that he stand between these guys. Now, anybody who's not on the circle, more than three feet away from the circle, there are no rules at all about being next to another player. You can run around. You can do anything you want. So you can do set plays where, for example, let's say Kai stands way, way out here, uh, or Nate's out here, and the second they go to tip the ball, Kai could immediately take off in a full sprint, and PJ could try and tip the ball all the way down the court for an easy layup. So I do think there are opportunities on the tip to set up some set plays where the players not on the circle move once the ball is released to try to get an advantage on a quick, easy, fast break. Um, the other thing I think that's important is to defend your own basket to make sure they don't get a layup, which is kind of what happens in this scenario. So you can see, I think they've got a set play where this player is clearly boxing out Trevor. Uh, you'll see as, the, as it gets closer to the toss, he's going to box him out, and this player is going to try and tip the ball directly to this area uh, to try to get an easy layup. So I think that we should probably always have at least one uh, defensive player back here. Uh, to try and stop any easy layups. Um, so it kind of depends what the what the goal is of the tip here, but I would say the goal of the tip should either be to tip the ball forward for a potential fast break or to tip the ball backwards in a direction where we definitely have a dominant uh, setup. So in this case, Miles and Trevor, PJ should be tipping it back between these two guys. But <clears throat> the danger of tipping it backwards is that they could potentially get a layup. So if you're gonna tip it backwards, you need to have a defensive player back here to make sure that they don't get an easy layup. So again, let's go ahead and take a look at this from here. You can see the guy bats it right to his own player and they almost get an easy layup out of it. Luckily they don't, they miss, there's a scramble. Now, again, I wanna stop the video here. This is something kind I've been talking about a lot. In this particular scenario, like read the defense and see what, they, what they're what they giving you. If you can get transition going, it's going to give you a much easier time because it's not gonna give the defense a chance to set up whatever trap or full court press they want. So in this case, when Kai got the ball, if he had just <clears throat> turned and started his dribble up the court, he has all this space to dribble into. And so the transition is going to be easier rather than stopping, finding the point guard, and passing it back this way, now it allows them to actually set up more full court press. So Kai, with no pressure on him, your eyes should be up court, looking to see what the defense is giving you, and dribble up court, make them stop you, and then pass the ball, and try to pass the ball up the court, not side to side, side to side. We want to get the ball up court. These players that are off ball need to be running to open space. So find out where the defense is. PJ, it'd be great if you kind of uh, drifted over this way to the open space over here. Miles straight up the sideline and then see are they going to give you the sideline or the middle of the court. So look for the open space. And you can see now because Kai passed it back, now they've actually set up more of this full court pressure. Trevor recognizes the double team coming, gives it back up to Kai, which is where we started a few minutes ago. Good pass. All right, so we broke the press. Good kick out. All right. I don't mind the miss. It was a wide open shot, Nate. I like to take good rebound miles and good put back. Now again, unless this guy is Steph Curry, um, 
I would prefer that Kai sink back a little bit, give him these NBA range threes if he wants to shoot them. Uh, the only thing that this does, guarding him this out this high, is it allows this guy to potentially break Kai's ankles and get a layup, and Kai's going to need help now at the three-point line instead of down here in the key where the rest of you guys are at. So I think the defenders should always sink back, give up the long-range threes until they prove that they can make them, and guard your guy more in the uh, in the area where they're going to be a threat. Notice that you know most of the game you guys are giving up layups, not NBA range threes. So guard the basket where they're actually making the points, not way out here. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if somebody called out the screen or not, but if somebody had called out the screen, Kai should have been able to get around this a little bit easier instead of getting stood straight up. Good talking, Miles. Good calling on the ball. Okay, so we got beat on a backdoor cut and a potential layup right here. So let's look at that one more time. So PJ is playing help. I like that. Um, Trevor might need to be here a little bit quicker to stop this. But again, if we go back a little bit further to where Nate gets beat. He, him and Kai kind of get crossed up, so now this causes penetration. But this is just good basketball. This is what I would love to see you guys do, which is dribble drive. Notice how it causes all the defenders to collapse and lose track of where their men are at. So PJ is collapsing and trying to help out, which means he loses track of his guy behind him. Good bounce pass. And a missed layup, but he gets the put back. That's just good basketball, though. It's penetration with a, with a good pass. Great job beating the press right there. It was one, two, three quick passes. Everybody was moving off ball. Now, Miles, if you can stop it right here, you can see Miles has a three on two on this fast break now because of the fact that we beat the press. This is where he needs to go hard, right to the rim, make this defender make a choice. If he comes out on him, we have a bounce pass or a lob pass to Nate for a layup. If he doesn't come out on him, pull up and either shoot a little you know, free throw jump shot or just go all the way to the rack. See how, Miles, you slow down? Don't slow down here. Just catch the ball and go full speed all the way because you got numbers. You got three on two. Once you beat the press, that's when you want to make them pay for pressing you. By slowing down, you allow this defender to catch back up to you.